now um, yeah, this was a presentation uh, uh, recently made for uh, the request of the american Indian society for developing countries you know so that, that that was the presentation so i think it's, it's good one okay move on to the yeah now so now the scope of this talk will be three you know one uh, we need to understand the magnitude of the problem and challenges okay so i like to tell all of uh, young people who are there you know i think post burn recursion is an amazing uh, opportunity i think you should not look at as look at it as a sort of a, a thing you know oh, it's a dull drudgy boring and all that and one in the beginning of your career if you do a lot of you know, burn contract release i think it will set your mind in a very stable uh, area where uh, later on when you do a major micro surgery and all that when you require uh, to uh, sit down and do things okay it will be very gratefully helpful okay that's one so only i put the magnitude of the problem and the challenges second i'll talk about the general principles and then we'll go to the specific areas and then see how to so now you will find all of them are burn contractures you know and you know it affects in various ways and uh, you keep looking at it no so all of them you, you keep looking at it okay and uh, the amount of um, disability they cause is uh, terrible and all of you know this you know why i'm very studying this is and uh, we are, you can make a great future with this i think that's uh, very important now you can make a great future provided you do it very well i think that's the point so you do a some amount of it comes with somebody comes with a contracture and he is so bad like this and after that you make a little bit better you know then it doesn't work you know you need to have a really really good thing you need to have so more than 50% of these people you know end up with some sort of deformity on the hands or the hands and the face of the ones now which again okay? and research international i think we vinita puri you know they all do it you know very well so this is called as a neglected but solvable uh, health crisis and uh, but then why is it neglected you no know? so you need to have all these four Yeah, burn contract is a skill intensive, is resource intensive, is labor intensive, it is time intensive. I think if you miss any of these, you know, you don't really make it. Okay, it's not just a one runoff splint. It's not just like a replant. No, you just do it and then you finished. Okay, and you, know, you need to run the marathon. No, you have to do and the post-operative you follow it. And then it's also worth it. I think all of us have to take it in the right perspective. You know, when you do burn contractures. you need to work out now the why what we do how it affects the society or how it affects the person okay for any of these you know, for every surgery nowadays you no know, they are all uh, counted as return on investment okay reconstruct surgery they say it is 13 is to 1 and uh, burn contractures and what they how the benefit they give is next only to cataract this thing the return on investment you know in cataract you can you can beat cataract okay cataract no short small amount of time short about it and then vision giving you know that's fantastic so i think the number one is uh, a cataract in surgery and uh, if you take a healthcare you know it's a uh, deworming you know is one of the huge thing the amount of cost you put in the returns that you get is enough is fantastic okay so that's it So this is a very conservative estimate, even if we say 13 is to 1, because it is taken the 25 percent of the functionality is improved. But in our patient, you know, I think you know, they improve you know, quite a lot, you know. So it is it should be instead of 13, you know, it must be 30 is to 1, I think, you know. But then if you see the technical skills that are required are are simple. You, you need to either put a skin graft, split skin graft, or a full thickness graft, or local flap, or double abdominal flap. So these are the things that you need. But only question is, you know. Uh, the putting it how do you put it the challenge is not in doing this for the challenge is in nicely releasing the contracture before you cover i think that's where the challenge challenge is there okay so uh, sometime back now we wrote this review article in ijps you know indian general plastic surgery and uh, i would really request you to read this you know not that because we have written i think it is uh, i thought it is written written well you know it, it, this talk is not only techniques Uh, but also the basis of what we do why we do and how we get it done and most of it you know you written in this uh, article so i'll put now first i'll put 10 principles i'll put for you okay the first principle is that you have to think of function and not the movement of the individual joints i think that's very important i think the think of function and not the movement of the individual joints so you have three i think the, what nishant uh, when he spoke also he said this 
three things you know you must think the the thumb must meet the tips of the fingers and you for that to happen you must have a good first of space and the mcp joints you know they must move i think you need to worry about the position and the movement of the uh, mcp joints i put the same paper same picture again you know so in none of these patients you know the thumb meets the fingers okay so here again it is a meet you see the same thing will be there the thumb does not the first of space is gone the thumb is not moving something will be there such a way you know the thumb will not meet the fingers here the thumb may be already at least may move but then you find that the the fingers are all contracted here so they won't move so whenever you see a burn contracture you start thinking oh i want the thumb to meet the fingers and how will i make it to move and you will you will hit it very successfully so take this case okay you put this here okay so here you find the same type of problem and uh, now we are starting to release it okay you see how i put the how i release i think this is what i said i think you have to get this picture in your mind you know you put it into your hard disk it has to come like this and not straight it's not extended position because if you keep it extended you 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 try in your hand you keep it extended and you keep it palm or abducted you will find that the amount of flap that is required is much much more when you keep it in palm or abduction or if you keep the release the first wave space and then if you keep like that then the amount is very less okay so that again is very important so there we have only you now concentrated on doing that you see you now immediately started working and you know, started writing it you will you'll hold you'll start doing things that's what is more important okay so the first wave space you need to do this now you see a dorsal hand contracture you see all of them are subluxated there's a long term is there here again you get a z deformity this guy has got okay so now is the other view it is side the ulnar side view and now here you know we are not put a flap now we are now we are putting only a skin graft shape put here again you see uh, the same principle i follow no i made it as a sort of you no know, uh, 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 algorithm no get the thumb out get the this thing out i think put it in the uh, outer border of the, the in index finger get the mcp joints reasonably well so the thumb meets the fingers it's not that i have to get 90 degrees thumb has to meet the fingers and then you will find now they all these guys you know they all move and you know, they are all use they use the hand for all activities you'll be using for the hand for all activity you'll picking it up and doing well yeah i think that's what is very important so here this point is important when you make the mcp joints i think this is where you know, most of the failures happen normal joint if you take what you have in this is the capsule of the joint see it's not like a joint you know where this only surface is here see you the articular surface of the metacarpal will go on to this is the volar side is also an articular surface is there but which is not present on the dorsum so when this flexes what will happen this articular surface must get get along to the other side i think that's very important this, this has to slide back and you have got a capsule which is lax so this has to glide into this what happens is when you have a long term if it's there this gets contracted and it all get fibrosed and there will not be a, basically there may not be this uh, pouch will not be there okay the sleeve will not be there so you will find when you um, um, reduce your mcp joint most often you may many a time you will be seeing the articular surface at the base of the proximal phalanx i think i'm sure all people who have done would have experienced that but that's not enough that means you are not released enough it is it is it, it, the finger is at 90 degrees but then the finger is not in a good 90 so what you have to do you have to make the sleeve i think you need to use your finger you need to get a curd instrument keep on making a, uh, this thing and get this here and then you have to pin it so only then you know, it will be stable i think that's the very important point you know that, uh, that i like to convey so that's the principle number 1 okay don't concentrate on the movement of individual joints think of function okay that's true the second point is when release the contractures sometimes now people come up with grafts i have found no they they like says they graft and then put in a flap you know so that doesn't work i think every repeatedly i'm telling it's not the graft or the flap that you put it's what you do before you put the graft or flap okay your joints must be positioned but otherwise the mere replacement of the scar by a skin graft or a flap will not work okay so here you see that in a big unit only it has done so what has happened is is there a problem so they have no excise the graft that has been there and then put in a groin flap and then is the same except that you know there is a scar there 
No, there's a flap there, you know, so this does not do any work, you know, so you, you, at the end of it, thumb doesn't make the fingers, okay, the, that's the that's the problem. The principle number three is that, you no, know, there are a lot of deformities you'll have. You start with the deformity whose correction will give the maximum benefit. I think that's very important. Whose correction will give the maximum benefit. So, uh, am I audible, uh, Dr. Lashmi? Yes. <coughs> yeah, there is a lot of, you no. Know, uh, yes, yes, sir. Your audible is different. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, air noise. Yeah, yeah, some. Uh, yeah, now it's better. Yeah, now it's fine. Uh, yeah. No, now it's again bad. No, so I think somebody else is open. Yeah. yeah now is it all right now? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, right, right. Very nice. Yeah, you're okay, clear, no? So when you've got a lot of deformities in a burn, I think every hand deformity you'll have, but then you need to choose the deformities which give the maximum benefit. Okay? It's not the one what is easy for you to do or what you like to do. Okay, and you have to address like this. Get the wrist in a stable and the right position. If suppose the wrist is bent, I think you need to get it straight. Okay, get the thumb out. You know, that's the next thing. Okay, must have foot. And then think, you know, can this thumb which you're getting out meet the fingers? If not, you know, what you should do to get this fellow meet? I think that's the point. See, here is the point. You know, the wrist is bent. The thumb is not out. Okay, same principles. Huh? Get the wrist straight. Okay, get the thumb out. And get a first wrist space and get the fingers down. Okay, that's it. Now say you think that way, no? So now what I have done here, I have done. I got the wrist straight. Okay, you got the wrist straight, and then you got the thumb out, and then you got the fingers down. Okay, and then you start doing. No? So it's only a graft you have put. No, but then the graft is done well. But here this fellow really, really wanted to put a flap. If you want to do more, we need a flap. But then he was not willing for a flap. So that's the reason we have put this. Okay. I would have not really worked. But then still, the MCP joints, if you need to do further, okay, you need to have a flap. But then, you know, if it's not willing, so, so it still is good. So you got a nicely healed graft, nicely healed graft, the web is good. But then you see, thumb is meeting the fingers. So then this is fine, this, this boy will be fine, okay? So that's the principle three. Principle number four is that, you know, the release that you obtain on the table, will most probably, not most probably, will be. That will be the maximum that you will obtain. Okay, never think, you know, oh, with post-op therapy, you know, I can get it better. You know, that no way. Okay, so you go for it and release the maximum. So at the end of it, you think, oh my God, this is the best I can do. And, you know, this is going to be only be a downslide and not going to be up by physiotherapy in a burn contracture. So you must go for broke, you know, you must get everything right. See, for example, sometimes we are missed it and this is done by us only. See, you think, you know, with physiotherapy will escape nothing. So what is only with time, what has done is this graft has pulled the palmar skin into the, this thing, so it's not. So if you have to do this, you have to release it again, no? Thumb meet the fingers, thumb meet the fingers, you know? So that's my, that's my mantra, you know? So you, now you get this. So once we have suffered with this, and then you put in a flap, so it's nice, it stays back, okay? And then you know, he pulls it down, he gets it, he's straight, okay? So you have to find the young fellow, no? So you find you can do everything by a bit of it, no? So you get a good flexion, good extension, good power. And then because he needs to, he has got a good wrist, okay? So principle number five is that when you do post band contracture release, the raw areas must heal primarily. I think I can't, you know, uh, more emphasis. I think these are all not given in books, you know, but then uh, I found uh, this is what if there's a graft loss, re graft the areas, you know, don't let them heal secondarily. Okay, so if you think that that fellow won't come, he won't afford to do a second chance, then that means when you do the first time, you know, you'll be more careful. Okay, you will be more, you will know, take a little more time to stitch the graft, you will take a little more time to uh, lay the gel net nicely, dress it nicely, compress it, you will uh, you'll achieve a little bit of more of hemostasis, all that you will do, okay? Secondary healing, you know, it causes hypertrophic scars, it causes recurrence of contractures, and even spotty areas, you know, it delays the institution of physiotherapy and compression garments. Okay, and the patients still need medical, they still have to come and see you. I think the goal of medical treatment is that they don't have to come and see you. I think that's what you have to, you have to think, you know. The principle number six is flexion is more important than extension, and you must concentrate to obtain flexion so that the fingers and the thumb meet. Okay, I think that's what it is. So here you got you know, horrible contractures. Then there's a small child, and both ends are like this. Okay, so then that's the right hand, okay, and that's the left hand. You know? So if I get a lot of pictures, so that's the right hand and the left hand, okay. So that's the left hand, okay. These are all disasters. Yeah. So here you see, 
I have made it very simple, no? See, here you find this guy, he's got a flexion contracture of the fingers, correct? So you've got a flexion contracture of the fingers too. Hyper is the MCP joint and uh, flexion contractures the IP joints. So here, you know, we, we have done that first. We have done the release of the volar site first. You see, you saw the graphs here, stitched it, and then now you commit, and then after that, now we put in a flap. The same child, you know, starts working, starts playing. Okay, now if you find, you know, this guy, you know, is really good. You now he's gone to school, he's now 800, he's 12 years old now. Okay, so both sides, you now we put on flaps. Okay, so they they do it well. So again, there's the same principle, you know, you just go the same order, you know, you do it. Principle number seven is timing is crucial. I think, you know, I told you, know, whole of plastic surgery, timing and sequence, and scar contracture release, craniofacial surgery, anything you take, you know, timing and sequence. And uh, people usually say that you need to do this after the scar reaches the equilibrium. So how far is true? I've been weighing it on uh, whenever I see a lot of these people. You find, particularly in children, now you need to intervene early because the power of the scar you know, is very extremely underestimated in a child. Suppose you allow it to mature, you know, it does a lot of havoc in the joints. See how much it has hyperextended this joint, see that? So the power of the scar is extremely underestimated. So in children, I don't wait for the scars to mature. I think we go ahead. So then that's the, at least you, know, you must do the first stage and you, know, you should do it all. So here again, you no know, same thing, you know. So I think at the end of the day, I don't think anybody will sleep, you know, except saying thumb must meet the fingers, you know. Okay, so that's it. So here again, you put in a, some sort of this thing we have put, and we have put in a flap. It's good. It's not a perfect, but doesn't really matter, you no. Know? If you leave it, it has gone to much worse, and then later on correcting it will be much problem. See, we have not done anything else. I think only surgery are done. No? See, the child is using the hand. The child is using the hands. The child starts doing it. So once you start doing it, then later on, the power of the flexor system make it will make things better. Okay, so you don't have to wait for the wait for equilibrium to happen. And uh, concentrate on aesthetics. No? Uh, the Fushia who said, no, hand surgery is also aesthetic surgery. And aesthetic acceptable deconstruction uh, helps the patient to easily integrate into society. So then that's the bad thing. Yeah, I think we have done a, 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 a free flap for him. And you see you now how we have put it on. The most important thing is that you now he's able to flex it, he's able to do functionally, it's good. But then you know, when you do this flap, you, know, you also put some zits in here. So you put this and then you put it. You now then you find that it stays back. You could have you know, just sutured the flap over here. You know, but you make these small things and all. There are a little bit small things, but then uh, we're doing them and it makes you know, real really better. And then uh, burn contracture, suppose you have a, a bad hand and then you do something, they'll always be much better. No? It's always like cleft lip and palate. No? If you ask the parents, you know, how they, you do, even if they have a lousy lip, you know, when they come back, you ask them, you know, how are they? You know, they'll definitely be better than before. You know? It is not a big gap, small gap. And it's only a question of you know, what are you aiming at. You know? So you keep on thinking when they come, there'll be a small thing, you reduce the cost or something like that. But then uh, you just nudge them to uh, get on to better results. You know? So you do some small Z plus you do, then they make it you know, much better, it'll do it. And the principle number 10, you know, I'll do the rest of the talk and then I'll come to the end. You know? I think that'll be the message I'd like to leave with you. So principle 10, number 10 you know, is on hold, okay? So now we'll talk about individual ideas, the points which I found to be helpful. So linear contractures, you can do Z plus in the hand, okay? You can do. But then when you do finger Zs in the fingers, you must do big Zs. I found a lot of people now put small, small Zs, you know. Small, small Zs, you know, is a small, small necrosis you love, okay? So you must do, in fingers, you must do big Zs. And one of the points, you know, this is my idea. So do not make the corners now very acute. For example, in this uh, patient, if you make a Z, you draw like this. But when you cut, now you cut like this. So this uh, this uh, central contracture uh, line, that's the line. And then normally what will happen, you put like this. No? So the, this, the end point is here only. So uh, for a first couple of millimeters, you know, I make it straight and then I bend it. No? So then what will happen, the suturing becomes very easy. And uh, one is which makes the sutures easy. Second, you know, this, the blood supply is much better. You don't get you know, the tip necrosis. So because you need to get 100%, you know, I think 100%, each time, every time, 100% you have to think. So the same guy, you know, you put it on, you put it sutured, and they get a good result. You know? So you have to fully open, fully flexed. Okay, this is, this is the sort of things you, know, you need to get. So again, another patient, you know, multiple Zs here and there you put, okay, you suture them. 
And then if you are not able to suture, but just because you have put Z, and when you put in Z, when you put it, when you make the finger straight, you will find you know, that uh, there will be some raw areas. It sometimes become. And don't be content uh, just stitching the way where it comes. You know what you have to do. You have to take put a graft. You do Z plasty and then put graft you know, in places where it is not meeting. You know then the results will be much better. Okay, then it'll be you can be make a flex. Here again you see you know there's minor extension lag, but it doesn't really matter. The guy you know must be able to fully flex. I think that's what flexion is more important than extension. So a good opposition, good flexion. I think that's what you get. And a single finger severe contracture, I think a cross finger flaps will be a good option. So you do this, you put a cross finger flap will be a good option. And in the dorsum, so this is what I said, the center slip is gone. So here you have it means that then you need to put in a flap. And uh, here the, one of the flaps I like is that on this side. Now just like a cross finger flap for another side, you just do the same thing and then push it down. Now you push it up uh, this way. So then you know it, it, it'll be uh, it'll be nice. And uh, post contrast release in the little finger. So if you have a raw area which is going on into the palm, that means you know, still you can do a cross finger. But then when you do this, it, it has to be like that. Okay. So I just drawn it and so because this area, so um, uh, I mean, that's the raw area. Okay. I'm just putting it as a model. Now you put it in another patient and showing you. So you, you have to, the, 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 for it to turn to the opposite side, because here the web, web will come here. Okay. So the web will come here. So what we have done is now we have been in such a big cross finger foot. And, the, uh, and but then you can take this area, you, this much you can take and then put it on there so that you now it, 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 fit, it fits in well. So then the rest of it now you cover it with graft. This part of it, whole of it is uh, covered. But then this part of it comes from uh, such a big area it comes. And uh, the, that's the finger you get. You know? So you get this, you get. So contrast in the palm. So now we got the fingers. We are gun and then palm. Palm, you know, I always like to put a thick split thickness graft. I like, don't like to put a, a flap in the palm. Suppose you put a flap in the palm, then what happens is the gripping capacity goes down. It's almost like having a small idli always in the palm. You know, so you can't really uh, hold. Okay, the bulk you know prevents grip and gives a feeling of already having something in something in the hand. So here you see a contrast in the um, uh, palm you have. You release it fully. See here again, no same thing. My, if you see my slides, you know, all slides will be the same. No? Uh, West face null release, the thumb is out, it's rotated, the pulp is seeing the fingers. So I think now when you all go back to sleep, you know, I think you are, all of you can give this lecture. Okay. So now you made this, that's the raw area that is found. You know, take a thick piston, see I quilted it. So you need to have, if you want to have good uh, take of graft, you must have I always use these words, you know, so I'm used for you know, words, you know, which gets into the head. Close immobile contact with the bed. Anytime you get graft, okay, you have to think, oh, have I done this? Is it close? Is it close means, you know, there, there are undulations, you know, you have to undulate, you have to do. That means you need to quilt. Or you know, what is the other reason for it not being close, you know, hematoma, no? So that means, again, it's not close. Okay, that means, you know, you should, hemostasis must be nice. Okay, close. Immobile contact. Uh, that means, you know, if, when you put a plaster, it has to be just be nice. Okay, it has to be immobile. Okay, so here, you know, quilting switches to confirm to the curves to ensure 100% take of the graft. Once you take it, now afterwards you put a silicone gel sheet, and then you get into this. Okay, okay. The, only then, you know, if only you have 100%, you can quickly get onto this. So that's the lady. You now you got. You no, know? so. And the only thing they have done is that the only palm contraction only we have done. After that, we have not done any anything at all. Only straight one shot uh, uh, done. And she's now quite happy. You know? They are all you now come from this thing. And then you, after that, you, know, you can uh, really massage these uh, grafts very well and do that. So there again, another uh, palm contraction. These are very difficult contractions. The little finger stuck to the palm. So there again, the same thing. You release it, put a graft, see to that now the 100% of the stakes, and then keep massaging. You take that. So the same patient, another patient where you get to this. So botanical deformity, I think very often functional. Burn difficult, burn deformity is very difficult to correct. The best is accept the deformity, but make sure the MCP joint is functional. Or if you don't want it to, the, the PEP joint is too much flexed, then what you need to do, you need to do an arthritis. It, no? See here again, I give an example. Now, burnt botanical deformity. He has got a lot of lot of things he has got. 
Okay, so you apply the, all the same principle I told. No, you need to correct something you know, which gives him a good result. So if you're not corrected the point deformity, see that it's still there. I have not corrected it, but then I have corrected the MCP joint part of it. You have corrected. You see what happens? You still has got the deformity. You know, I have not done anything to this deformity. See, now he's able to put a tripod pinch. You know, he can do everything. He's very happy. Okay, if you try to do something which does not really bother him, you know, that means they'll not be happy. Swan neck deformity means it has to be corrected. Swan neck deformity is not a functional deformity. The thumb cannot meet the fingertip. Most often it's due to a tight dorsal skin, you know, or the PEP joint. So where, you know, you need to exercise it, both sides you need to exercise. So dorsum, you know, because it's easy to underestimate the need of the graft. Okay, see, it's not like a door hinge, you know. So suppose this many centimeters, this many centimeters. You take the distance here and you take the distance, it's the same. But whereas now in a finger, you take the A to B. And then now after flexion, now you take it from A to B, you know, it's vastly different because it is not like a door hinge, it's bending it here. So once it bends, what happens is that the distance of this much distance, you know, is added up here. And this much distance again gets added. Again, the dorsum is very extremely easy to underestimate the need of the graft because when they flex, you must allow them to flex. If they have a swan neck due to the tight skin contracture, I make an incision on the, uh, the middle of the proximal phalanx and the middle of the uh, middle phalanx so that now you'll be able to put a graft on those in those areas. Now coming to the web creep, you know, so that again, you have to prevent a web creep. You need to have a, a flap inside the base you need to have and a square flap or any other flaps you can do you know uh, as long as you are not afraid to put grafts i think you can get away with anything in burn surgery okay if you don't if only try to squeeze it you now you get into problem okay you do this and the same patient they will find now the hand and wrist you now we come okay so these are these are all disaster cases you know? so this exactly this is what uh, is on side you now this is the left hand okay and uh, you see what we have done Okay, so easy. Now it becomes very easy, I think. You know, everybody will start doing it off. You know, thumb, it's, 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 they see the position. In all cases, I'll have it like that. Say, so here now, I'm not bothered to put this. So my only idea is you now thumb has to meet the fingers. Okay, we have put a flap over here. And uh, see, that's the right hand. You know, he came with the right hand. He, he, he came with this, like this. Okay? See, somebody has tried to correct this. You know? It's amazing. Okay? Somebody has tried to correct this. And they find the thumb is still there. Because... They put a flap in them before correcting the deformity. Okay, that's one. And releasing the scar, exercising the scar, and putting the flap in it does, does no good. So again, same thing. You know, I just lift the flap, you yeah, put it on, same thing. So okay, here again now, because there's another flap in between, you know, it gives a little problems. We yeah, put it on, same thing we have done. You know. So now, uh, single shot surgeries on both sides. You know, so you find the way he works. You know, so he writes, he does anything. It's again the same principle what you're told. And age is not a criteria to change the plan. So here is the child, you now get this. See, here's the poor child. See, there's the hand, one hand, there's the other hand, okay? So here you need to do the same way. Do one hand at a time, you know, because it's too much if you have to do, because the timing or the amount of time you take for the operation will be high. So we have done so much for one hand, okay? So again, you see, same way. MCB joints bend, wrist in right position, thumb in the position where you put it. Put graphs, you know, you'll find... I've taken a long time to do this. It takes the time. It, you know, it takes time. It's worth it because if you don't, if you don't spend an extra hour, that means you, know, you need to have an extra surgery. Okay, it has to take fully well. Same child, you know. So every time we you know, see how he brings the child. So the hands were bad. So the hands are good. Okay, the child is using it. Okay, this is sent by parents, you know. So they done it. We didn't take it this way. Okay, so that's one. So another hand, you know, which has got this. See, now you see the thumb doesn't meet the fingers, okay? So now you get on to this. I think we've got a big video for this, you know. So we have to get this on and then we take extend it straight, okay? And uh, we keep on taking it, doing it until you, till you get it straight. Now this is a big video, so we'll skip it. And uh, <clears throat> now, see this, you get it for some time. I don't know whether the, the other part it has got. See, now you, you, you see, get it. So what I would like to show is that, you now see, the, what Nishan told, you know, you take about a few centimeters away from there, you now you, you take that. And you say, this is the incision I told. I think I only wanted to wait till this video. See, normally, 
when you're releasing the first wave, people to see, as you release this, the, the thumb is falling down. See, this part of it is very important. I think you need to get it down and do, go on to the other side. So this part of it you need to see. As, as I'm doing that, you see the thumb is getting into this. We feel, many of the times we think, you know, we are releasing the first web space. I think we are not releasing the first web space, uh, web contracture alone. If you think yeah, I'm releasing the first web contracture, you won't do this. But then if you have it in your goal, as that now you want the thumb to meet the fingers, then you will do this. I think this, this goes on that and do. And you will find out. Uh, so uh, this uh, finger we do. So each of these fingers, now we straighten, straighten it. And we keep on going. <clears throat> you know how much time we have. So. <clears throat> So uh, gently I'll keep on pushing it, no? and keeping in mind that I'm not exposing the. So once you get to that side, now then you find where the skin is tight, no? so we do that. So you, you keep releasing the. Now that we have released uh, some amount of uh, polar uh, contracture, now you go on to release the dorsal contracture. Okay, so release the dorsal contracture. <clears throat> so at the end of it, now what you released is this. Okay, so now the end of it, what you have got is this. No? So I, I'll get on to the uh, where we started. So you, you, I think all of you must remember uh, where we started. No? So that's the hand where we started. Okay, ah, see, this is a good picture. So that's the hand where we started. It looks you know, very uh, um, um, uh, worrying. Okay, we will think, you know, where do we start, where we finish. No? It's so easy. You, know? you just have to think that thumb has to meet the fingers. Okay, I'll just do that. No? So you, you do the same thing. So now the thumb can meet the finger. Now I know no, it can meet the fingers because I also made a horizontal incision over there. Graft. We have not done anything else. I put a graft. But then now it is taken away some more. Now we'll put it to some more quilting sutures, some more stitching catches, all that we'll do. And then now we will get it. So that's a, so this is another patient. Now we were just recently done, but then we need to get that to this thing. So I'll show you some other pictures. Now I'll find, uh, so you, you put this, you, know, you put a thicker graft here. So it heals well, no? So again, they meet the, they do that. Web contractures. So you do this. We are not afraid to put in grafts, no? So you do that, you do this. So again, you do that. So same way, no? So here again, you see the volar side, you put this, and then you drain the dorsal side. And the dorsal side, you put in a graft. See, now you see that he's got a full flexion. Okay, you got a, he's got a full flexion there, you got. So if you find this side, See, isn't it? The, we, this is where we put the graft, but still, you know, they are not very good. But then, without putting this, you put the other way, then they'll not be happy. So now, he, now he's happy. So now we know he'll be happy to do this. He'll be happy. So next time, as you put a little more graft, and finally, so I put the tenth point. I said, no, I have to put the tenth point. See, I find the burn contract release is one of the most gratifying surgeries in plastic surgery. And then we have a, a project called as a hope after fire. So where you know, any of these surgeries can be done free in our hospital. And almost the most of the cases, so almost all of the cases have been done totally free. Maybe all of them have been done totally free. And then that is really you know, gave a little bit of you know, more uh, uh, ethos in the life you know, as to what do we, what can we stand for. You know? The tenth is you know, don't give up. You know? Keep doing, keep, keep keeping the core principles in the mind. And it's one of the most satisfying fields in plastic surgery because uh, the problem in our country is huge. I think mean, it's huge. It's almost like the, if there is a, something like a smile train comes for a burn train, you know, I think you'll really find you know, how much of this. But one of the things that we have done is this. You know, we have done 988 surgeries you know, free. I think that that's where the st score stands today. You know? See, here's the boy you know, who's never uh, worn a shirt in his life. Okay, this happened when he was a child. I think the axilla is stuck and then the fingers are stuck. But still, he's so happy. I don't know how we can be happy, but he give a smile for this picture. So we have released it. So we got the whole hand out, okay? And we got a shirt. The first thing he said was that the most happiest thing he said ever in his life was that he wore a shirt. He said he's never worn a shirt in his life, you know. So the most important thing, and then he's gone back to he's gone back to work. And this girl, you know, she so she was just in burns you know, when he was one and a half years of age, you know. You see the, both the hands, it is extraordinarily difficult to. And in his uh, whole of her life, she has never done anything with one hand. You know? If he wants to drink, he wants to take anything, you know, she has to use only two hands because thumb doesn't meet the fingers. Okay, so 
And now, you know, she's going to school and then uh, she's about now 14 years of age. Okay. See, the, she has never done. See, if you're like this, now you see, where are the fingers? Uh, no fingers, no palm, where, uh, where the thumb? So they're all here. So there are, there are something in all here. Okay. Something here. So we set about doing the doing here. Okay. And got a hand. So now, you know, they're making up a hand, you know, so uh, thumb meets the finger, starting to do this. She's got something in the cup. Okay. She start doing it. And finally, you know, when he did one hand itself, you know, she started uh, um, um, uh, using her hands. She started eating. She started doing this. She started combing with her hands. Okay, she did all that. Okay, and we finished both the hands. And then one day I asked her, you know, what do you think is the most happiest thing that you have in your life? He asked, you know, uh, I have done so much for you. What is that? He said that when you go to school, sir, he said that we have a game spirit. At the end of the game period, you know, our teacher will ask all of us to go wash the face. I was the only one, you know, who could never wash my face. Okay, I think after you did this surgery for the first time in my life, you know, I could hold some water in my hands and splash it on my face. Okay, I think that's a fantastic comment you know, that we could have. You know, it is so nice, sir. She said. So you really, what do you think? You know, when you do burn contractures of the hands or to the face, you know, you really make you know a great difference in the uh, lives of people. And uh, some of you might have heard me talk about this. Now, Archibald McIndoe, I think you, uh, many of you have heard, he was the surgeon, uh, one of the earliest surgeons, you know, like um, um, our um, um, Harold Gillis. So he was responsible for uh, reconstruction of the um, airmen, you know, who in the Battle of Britain and all that in the World War, when they came out of the flying or burning cockpits. At that time, they are not having a you know, good cover for the face, and all of almost all of them were burnt in the face. So he really he was in charge of you know, uh, uh, reconstruction of their faces. And you know the chapters, you know, the privilege of living. He said that they, 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 he did most of it with uh, tube pedicles, you know, the tube here and there. And you know, they called, uh, and they really did not know what to do. So it's called as a guinea pig club. He used his, all his imagination, and those fellows, all those fellows, were willing to be guinea pigs. So in the end, you know, you'll say in the, in the, in the chapter called Privilege of Living, you'll say, I, uh, the real and lasting satisfaction is derived from what the patient does with what the surgeon achieves rather than from the purely technical aspect of the repair. So if you really see the hand that you created for the girl, it's not a normal hand, you know. It's far from a normal hand. But then what she does with what we give, you know, I think that's what really matters. I think that's what you need to really think. We don't give them normal hands, but it is so amazing to see what they do with what we give. I think that's what really makes life worthwhile, both for the surgeons and for the for, for patients. So I think I've given you this. I think that's the last tenth uh, point is this. It makes your life you know, worthwhile. Now, thank you so much, uh, all of you, for all the things that you do.